So this is uh, the third session of this afternoon. It's the okay. talk, Learning from the Developing Game Infra. It's Jerome, C uh, CEO, CEO of Commerce, President of Ethereum France. You're free That's to perfect. go. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Wei. Um, so w when does it start? Like right now? Or uh, do we have a, a couple of minutes? Is it at, um, at 30 or now? Yeah, you can go there now, I think. Okay, uh, I'll just share my screen then. All right, share screen. Yep, entire screen. Yeah, you have a few minutes more to uh, explain a little bit more the things you're trying to say. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, um, good luck, every, good good day, good day, everyone. Uh, very happy to uh, to be here with you to uh, talk about the lessons that we've learned after two years of on-chain gaming. Um, as uh, Wei said, I'm um, I'm the CEO of Cometh, which is a, a game studio and a, a software platform for games, which we call Alembic. Um, a little bit more about us: we are um, we are a, a team of uh, 35 people right now, uh, mostly built out of blockchain veterans. Uh, we've been in the industry for quite some time. I, I, I was talking to a friend of mine that is uh, currently in a Shanghai right now. And he told me like, oh, it's so cool to be back in Shanghai. And I was like, oh man, it, I miss mainland China. I think I've, I haven't been in Shanghai since uh, DEF CON 2. So it's, it's been a while. Um, so at, at Cometh, we build, um, we build on-chain games. That's, uh, that's our, um, our, our approach. We try to put as many things on-chain as possible. And we also distribute the tech that we build for our games uh, to different clients and partners. And here you have um, a small selection of, uh, of the ones that are publicly working with us. So we work with um, uh, brands like uh, Lacoste or a traceability solution for wine like Walk and Wine or uh, uh, MMORPG with Animoca on, on Life Beyond. And uh, also with uh, prime uh, actors like the French National Lottery, FDJ. Um, I'm the president of Ethereum France, which means that I get to organize ETHCC, ETHCC, and I'm, I hope to see uh, a couple of you uh, in Paris in, uh, in July for this, uh, for this conference. And I'm well versed in economics because I'm, I'm a trained economist by, uh, a, well, from, from my previous, uh, previous years at school. All right, so let's get into the, the, the core topic. Um, in February 2021, we launched our first on-chain games. It was probably the one of the first uh, blockchain games that was fully on-chain. Um, around, around at the same time, you had uh, another game called Dark Forest, maybe a couple of weeks before um, and so on. And you had also uh, Avigochi that was doing some, uh, some tryouts about their, their first attempt to, to build a game. So you had those, uh, those, those three games, uh, Us, Amoth, uh, Avigochi, and Dark Forest that were trying to put things on-chain, like run a game inside the chains. Uh, something really crazy. Uh, let me describe what you're, you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, so on the, the top left, you have the main screen of the game. Uh, each blue dot, each, each blue square is a spaceship uh, controlled by a player. And the goal of the game is to connect with other players, uh, pay them a little fine. And if you pay the, 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 the price to the player, uh, everybody, uh, every player gets their own price. Um, you get to change position in space. Like uh, you can move your spaceship by connecting to another player and paying them to pull you next to them. So the goal of the game was to find, try to find connections with different players, uh, try to build a, a, a path. And once you find the right path, you appear at another point in space. And eventually, you get very close to the cometh that are passing by. If you are close enough to the cometh, uh, you're going to uh, get some of the rewards, to get some of the points that are uh, inside these asteroids. So we, we, we built on this, uh, on this initial, uh, initial uh, game system, and we tried to add different things to really emerge the players into uh, having a, a core blockchain experience. And we were trying to link it to, um, to a full-fledged economy. Uh, in order to give rewards to the player, uh, we created a decentralized exchange called uh, Comet Swap, uh, which was a, a fork of uh, Uniswap, and the players were trading on this uh, on this um, on this uh, AMM, and the fees of the AMM were redistributed in the game. So we tried to create an economy that was uh, sustainable this way, 
and we try to uh, incentivize the players to uh, do certain connections, uh, do certain staking, do certain uh, actions, and so on. So it was our first attempt, and we probably built it in about uh, three to four months, and said, like, hey, let's see, let's see how a blockchain game can thrive. Uh, let's see if there is any any big blockers. Let's see if there is anything that uh, uh, we should improve in the future, and how we could um, and how we could build better games in the future after this first attempt. So did it work? Well, first off, it was a tremendous experience because we had a little bit more than 10K unique players that were uh, playing the game. Uh, at the, the heights of the game during one of our main tournaments, we had 3,500, 3.5K players all together at the same time. Um, from, from, from a gaming achievement, it's super hard even for uh, an, a massively online, play, online game like uh, World of Warcraft or even Diablo to put almost 4k players together on the at the same on the same map so one of the big advantage of blockchain and and, uh, and gaming applied to blockchain um it's that you get to have a huge connectivity huge network effect of all of your players we also learned the hard way that um, uh, if you want to make your game evolve in the future and um, add some content or change the way the game behave you have to think about that way before otherwise evolutivity and changes are going to be uh to be hard to uh, to properly implement Play to earn is getting less and less uh, popular those days, and for good reasons. It's it's like a drug. When you start to have an earn element in your game, uh, you get to uh, engage the players for the earn element instead of engaging them for the fun element. But from another perspective, um, if you consider that acquiring a player is costly from a marketing perspective, um, the play to earn mechanism is making sure that you are actually paying what the player earn to bring them to play. So if your uh, cost of acquisition that you target is $1 uh, and you decide to distribute $1 to every player, uh, well, they're going to come for the dollar. Uh, but you are going to get players that are coming because they are mostly interested for the dollar in the first place. So it's something that should, you should manipulate with, uh, with, with caution. And we also learned that, learned that um, the, the core infrastructure, the core blockchain infrastructure is not adapted to, uh, to to gaming as an application running on blockchain. It's getting better and better uh, in terms of uh, adapting the, the the tooling for decentralized finance, but it's far from um, so far from production ready when it comes to, uh, to 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 running blockchain into games. And the, all all the middleware that you have to build yourself is really painful uh, if you take the wrong decisions or if you if you take uh, if you take the wrong path. Uh, you can get stuck in a, in a huge legacy in your code that uh, it would be hard to, uh, to, to, to handle. Now, we also came to, to understand that uh, at some threshold of players and, and threshold of on-chain activities, it makes no sense to be on someone else's chain. Uh, you're going to have uh, the noisy neighbor problem, like people are playing your game and suddenly a big drop is happening or a big... Uh, a big uh, project is launching a new uh, a new uh, incentivization mechanism and then suddenly the gas price just spike and once the gas price is spiking you're like oh my god i i, I can barely have my players play my game right now so we we you know, there is no concrete numbers like we like to to take this as a as a as a rule of thumb if you have 30k 50k players or if you have 400 daily active and they are actively using the chain you should consider being on your own chain so in November 2021, we, we sunsetted this game. We stopped creating content, but you can still play the game because it's fully on chain. So it will never, ever disappear. It will continue to run as long as the, the, the chain that we deployed on, which was Polygon uh, back in February 2021, still continue to exist. This game will still continue to exist. So overall, we had the wrong mental model in the first place. Like we were, we were considering considering this game uh, and, um, and 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 its middleware and its core infrastructure as like a, a rocket to launch a satellite. Like the game was all satellite. We 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 took we took a lot of uh, of shortcuts. We uh, we built disposable code and uh, we wanted to launch this rocket and 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 then have the have the the, the satellite in orbit <clears throat> and then think about something else it turns out it uh, it was really painful in the uh, in the rest of the the evolution of the game and we had to sunset it because the code was too hard to maintain in the, and was not built for uh, mass market in the first place but also it to it, it told us different stories about uh, why on-chain game is extremely important so why why would you even bother doing those blockchain games 
first the, the blockchain part of games like when you bring blockchain into games it's going to have the, the similar impact as uh, networking like uh, in internet connections between players had between games like uh, being able to play against an opponent that is living in uh, in korea that's living in paris that's living in japan uh this this connectivity has extremely was extremely strong it was uh, a complete change of paradigm for games similarly uh, the operation the the the, aven the happening of 3d engines like the capacity of rendering uh, uh, 3d depth uh, physics and so on into a game changed completely the, the the way people think about games and how game designers were designing games now blockchain is bringing a whole new elements so it's going to change radically how we interact with games and how we think of games because blockchain brings three extreme benefits the first one is the hyper financialization the capacity to run the economy on your of your game inside the blockchain it brings a natural uh, a natural currency a natural uh, a native currency from the from the chain you're using but moreover it gives you access to a tremendous set of blockchain primitives a blockchain economics primitive that is usually very hard to get in an indie game or very hard to get right even in a triple a game the ability of having an amm inside the game to handle the the trades between the players the ability to have a a, a sort of an open sea like inside your game to handle the the trade of items between the games and your way of linking those elements between one another with your game design is just um it's it's a whole new it's a whole new element to uh, to explore uh, in terms of game designs there is the capacity of using the 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 chain and what's happening on chain as your meta game the, the blockchain can be perceived as a sovereign state with its own ownership system with its own rules with its own social status the the very fact that you own from a cryptographic standpoint the asset that you have in the blockchain creates a whole new genres of using the chain and its uh, and its elements and its uh, and its political system its social system as the meta game so you can rely on the blockchain to make your community grow uh, more engaged and and feel more um below as they belong into the game uh, and, and in the in the community that you created along with the lore of the game and the north star of all of this is being able to craft autonomous world because once the game is deployed in the blockchain it's living there it's living there forever as long as the blockchain will run and eventually if you get decentralization right it should run forever it allows the player to permissionlessly improve the game create new models create new stuff and this is the grander visions like uh, we want to be able to create autonomous world that are interoperable <clears throat> and it's a much better and much brighter star than just the metaverse uh, everything is handled by one single party and uh, you enter the facebook metaverse with the google metaverse and so on permissionlessly extending those world is giving back the capacity for the creators to contribute and contribute fairly but we got it wrong the first time uh like when we deployed on the on the game in in february 2021 um the, the cost of the native token of polygon uh, which was matic was pretty low we're talking about five six six cents of euro uh but it went 31 x <laughs> during the during this period of time and the average gas price just spiked tremendously so overall uh, an action in the game uh like moving moving your spaceship from one place to another in space used to cost one tenth of a cent so like 0 0.001 dollar uh, to move your spaceship and when we decided to like stop the game stop creating content and, and work on something else and then probably come back to it later on uh, we were at something like 14 cents per actions so it was tremendously expensive for the players to uh, to be able to properly move once the chain started to get traction and it, it gave us a sense that uh, yeah yeah we were the right this is what this was the wrong mental model uh, when you think about your game, when you think about building a game, usually it's similar to building a movie, like preparing for a movie. You prepare the scenario, you recruit the actors, you think about the the, the plan to develop, uh, you 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 hire a couple of people for the camera, you you take uh, tickets, you you plan your your shooting and so on, and then eventually the game is finished, like the film is finished, and this is how games have been built for years. But this is also how you should think about your blockchain game. Like it should follow the same step. It should follow the same uh, the same path of integrated and different blockchain elements. Uh, with we work with uh, 
almost 20 clients now and all of them in between all of them there is a lot of games that uh, said well i'm going to work for 15 months on my game and then the next three months i'm going to work on the blockchain part it's just the wrong way to do it because you're going to rush the blockchain part and the blockchain part will be too hard to evolve you need to think about the blockchain inside your game as you would think your game as a whole and you should build it as a luxury spaceship something that can cruise across the the universe and reach an ever explored frontier before and in order to do that uh, you need to realize that the whole blockchain stack for games is extremely dense you will need nft toolings you will need training enablers you will need logins methods like to to make the game accessible to uh, web two players as well there the app designs tooling are something that you want to link your game design to the blocks part of it. You want to make sure that you are on the right infrastructure, that you are on something that is future-proofed. And eventually you want to be able to engage also your players with uh, proper gaming tools uh, that are linked to the blockchain. So at the application level, like think about scalability, think about reliability, think about the security that you will get from an interim like chain and think about which on-chain engine you want to use because the closer you are to the chain, the closer you will be to engage your community in the long term. But the solutions that you may find on the market or that you may try to craft yourself uh, to bring frictionless onboarding are still in, this, in their infancy and still hard to, uh, to reach. Um, getting ease of payment <clears throat> Sorry, getting ease of payments, like payment of credit cards, payments with mobile money and so on, is not always possible. And you have to find work around. You have to work very hard to, uh, to get that. But don't get me wrong. Like the space is, is evolving pretty fast. And with, um, with, with actors like uh, Epic Games and other big stores and big distributors uh, being now friendly to Web3, you're going to get that much sooner. And um, when we realized that, we worked a lot on, on packaging those different tools, on providing a lot of open source tooling and a lot of uh, open source shortcuts that uh, you should take if you want to reach the stack. And I venture to check out uh, alambic.tech, our, um, our placeholder website describing this, uh, this approach as a whole. So now our segue is that we spent about uh, 12 months building a, a, a trading card game uh, that, are, that have a lot of, um, of on-chain primitives. And uh, we launched this game about uh, a year ago, and uh, we wanted to really uh, um, uh, harden the, the principle, make the game really good and really uh, and really fun to play. And uh, as a pure um, uh, organic uh, growth, we had about 80k players that have tried the game, enjoyed it, and it's still heavily played today on its beta mode. And now we are uh, remastering the game to prepare for release on classic stores, like on, on classic distributors. And uh, you will you will hear about this game in the in the coming months. I'm I'm pretty sure it will be a blast. The big changes that we did from before, apart from uh, revamping completely how the um, how the, the core infrastructure work and the core middleware worked, uh, we added a full-fledged account abstraction for. Uh, account management uh, and the onboarding is now as smooth as it can be. I like to say that Web 2 uh, is usually two clicks and you're logged in. And now we're getting into Web 3, which is one more click, like just three clicks. But you are in you are in, in a manner that's uh, completely, uh, completely non-custodial. You own your own key. We provide you a wallet inside your device and you get it and it's yours. And it's abstracted in the sense that you don't have to pay the gas anymore. And we can handle the gas payments for our users uh, through different open source methods that uh, we gladly distribute and, and, and tell people how to implement that. And the cherry on the cake is that when you have 80k players, uh, you, you would be uh, you would be uh, like one fifth, 20 percent or so of the active players of any uh, any major L2s like Polygon. Uh, so you cannot afford to be the big guys on Polygon. You need to have your own dedicated app chain. And that's the kind of thing that we've been uh, working super hard to make uh, to make happen and to, uh, and to productize. When we uh, started the, the MMORTS, our first game, uh, it was February 2021, and uh, the, 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 act, the daily gas used on Polygon was quite low. And now that we released uh, our TCG beta, uh, it's super high. So we are we are convinced that this is the, the right uh, approach, like uh, abstracting as much as possible of the blockchain, but still putting a lot of things on chain for the super users and the creators to be able to participate and picking an app chain, picking your own chain or maybe a first chain as a, as a starter and then move to your own chain. Because if you are going to have traction, you will need your chain. It's, there's no way around that. 
Um, one of the, 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 the great things about this approach is that it solves a lot of the acquisition problem. Uh, we tried a bit to, uh, to do some, uh, some acquisition on, on classic venue. Like we, we tested some campaign on Facebook, some campaign on, on TikTok and, and Twitter just to, to see how uh, the market was reacting and how our onboarding and so on was. And exposing wallets as a first uh, entry point is just too painful. Like the, the, the funnel that you get is just extremely thin because installing a wallet is counterintuitive for any players. It's, it's a hustling and a new security model for them to learn. <clears throat> and you really cannot expect them to, uh, to pay enough attention to that. Uh, like learning this new security model, uh, like clicking 20, 40 clicks to, to install the wallet, then writing down a backup, and then you're telling them, well, you should buy some crypto. So now go on a, one of those providers and, and buy crypto, and now you can send a transaction. Um, I don't know exactly how many dots there are on the top and, uh, compared to the two at the end, but the, the funnel was almost 100% clogged. Like uh, it's too hard for Web2 players to actually go this direction. But I'm glad to say that this is the kind of problem that we have been able to solve and also the kind of problem that a lot of different companies in space are trying very hard to solve. Uh, so we are going around this. So if you want to build the future of gaming, um, I'm easy to reach. Uh, we share the same dream, so we should talk. Um, as I said before, with Alembic, we package and we open source a lot of the necessary tools. We love to share and we love to exchange with people trying to build game with ambitions. And uh, before I let you go, I'll let you uh, uh, scan this QR code and test our, our account abstraction a solution that uh, we released a couple of weeks ago. And uh, you, have the, um, you have the whole documentation available. So if you want to chat, you know, you know where to reach me. Uh, I'm Jerome at comf.io. And on most of the, of the social media, uh, like Telegram, Twitter, and so on, you can find me at this handle, jdetichet. Um, yep. So it was uh, it was a pleasure chatting with you. Always a bit uh, weird to to talk uh, at an event from from a remote place because you don't get to interact that much with the the crowd. Uh, but you can meet me also in person in Paris during the the third week of July. I'll be I'll be hosting ETC and uh, in, and going to many side events. And um, yeah, so that's it for me. Thanks everyone. Thank you, thank you, Jaron, for me sharing. It's uh, so I'm gonna have you to share to speak. Personally, I like you know, recently, you know, the Diablo 4 is on live. I don't know yep. uh, if it's a game. Yeah, I love it very much. And also for French, actually, I'm a language lover. So in French, uh, the like most popular word for me is uh, Pompignon. You know, <laughs> yeah. Butterfly, so. yeah, I pretty, pretty much like the word. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see you uh, in the EHCC about maybe three weeks, right? Yep. So I'm yep. looking forward. I'll be, uh, I'll be there. Yes. Let's uh, also looking forward to your uh, uh, product officially shipped out in the near future. Yep. Thank you. For Thank us. you so much.